كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brothers, my sisters Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam It is mentioned in the Quran in several places and Allah Almighty has prescribed it upon those who can afford it. If you cannot manage or cannot afford, you don't have to go. But there are lessons to be derived from the Hajj. Why would Allah Almighty make it compulsory for us to go to Mecca to reenact something that happened in history? If you look at what it was, it was the sacrifice of the Prophet Abraham, Ibrahim, may peace be upon him. He left his wife Hajar and his son Ismail in the desert of Mecca by the instruction of Allah. There were many times when Allah instructed the Prophet Ibrahim to do things that may not have made sense to the human mind, but the fact that the source was Allah, the instruction came from the Maker. Ibrahim salam was very successful because he obeyed knowing who was the instructor who issued the command. And so he obeyed it knowing that subhanallah, nothing can go wrong. When you and I obey the instruction of Allah, we should realize nothing can go wrong. Ultimately, we will achieve the dream and the goal. What is it? It is paradise. So you may not have exactly what you want on earth, but when you get to the other side, the Almighty will grant you the ultimate success, the eternal success, the beautiful paradise. May Allah grant that to us. So if we look at Surah Al-Hajj, it is a surah that is named after the pilgrimage itself. Allah Almighty speaks about the Day of Judgment right at the beginning. And He warns the people of the judgment, yet the surah has highlighted the pilgrimage. Now. Looking at the conviction that Hajar had, the mother of Ismail, may peace be upon them, she was convinced that my husband has left in order to earn the pleasure of Allah Almighty, in order to obey the instruction of Allah Almighty, and he has left with us none but Allah. This does not mean that you and I can just leave our families and say, I leave you in the care of Allah without making some form of an effort to provide for them. But in the case of the Prophet, yes, it was. Sometimes in desperate cases where you have no option, then definitely we leave it totally to Allah. But otherwise, Allah requires us while trusting Him to make an effort to provide for our family members. Hajar and Ismail were in the desert of Mecca. No water, no food. And she started making an effort with conviction. Those two qualities are loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make an effort and be convinced that Allah will provide. So any one of us at any time, if we're going through hardship, difficulty, reconnect with Allah. And you will know that the conviction developed as a result of the reconnection with Allah will guide you through to making the best possible effort as a human being depending on your capacity that is God-given. And then you see the doors fling open one after the other. But bear patience. Surah Al-Hajj teaches us a lot of patience. It teaches us compassion. It teaches us to feed the poor. It teaches us to reach out to those who are less privileged. It teaches us that when we do something for the sake of the Almighty, even if it is, something within ourselves or in a smaller circle, if the Almighty would like it to grow, it will grow beyond our imagination. Look at the Hajj, where Allah Almighty asks Ibrahim, may peace be upon him, to announce the Hajj. Verse number 27 of Surah Al-Hajj. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضامر. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you announce this Hajj. The people will come from all over, from the furthest points, from the valleys. They will come on every lean camel and every ravine. Subhanallah. 
they will come from all over. But at that particular time, there were no loud hailers, let alone the internet or telecommunication as we have it today. You wouldn't have been able to boost your post. You wouldn't have been able to get people to retweet, etc. No. But what there was, was the help of Allah. When something is done for the pleasure of Allah, it will be granted the correct growth. And if Allah wants it to grow, nothing can stop it. And if Allah does not want something to grow, nothing will make it grow, no matter what. So my brothers and sisters, this conviction is what we learn from the Hajj. We make an effort, we bear patience, and we are convinced about the result. Anything we do in life, we should bear patience. The fruit is born, but not immediately. You will bear the fruit or the work, the job, or whatever it may be, shall bear fruit. You will see it, you will taste it, inshallah. But in all honesty, that is only if Allah wills. You need a lot of patience, you need hard work, and you need conviction in Allah. When you are convinced that Allah Almighty will help you, He will guide you, He will open your doors, then Allah Almighty requires you to bear patience. The Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, also again in Revelation, Allah Almighty says to him, we have answered your prayer when you prayed against the Pharaoh, but you will see the result of it in due course. In the meantime, we want you to pray. We want you to bear patience. That's what it was. So remain dedicated to Allah. Here is Hajar running from Safa to Marwa, the two mounts in Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. And she was running from one to the other with the idea of searching for water. She was searching for a sign of life. And subhanAllah, the water started gushing. The birds began to fly. The people then came and the city of Makkah was established. MashaAllah. Something so miraculous, so unbelievable. It's only Allah who can do that. Imagine from nothing. Many of us have actually been helped by Allah in a way that's unimaginable. And Allah tells the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that were you not small in number and we increased you in number? Were you not small and downtrodden and we gave you respect? We gave you honor. How many of us have been honored by Allah? We've been through in our lives days when we didn't even know if we would survive. And here we are today watching this program, benefiting from the words of Allah, reconnecting with revelation, reconnecting with Allah. Surely we should thank Allah. There were days when we thought we were forsaken. Allah does not forsake. Allah does not abandon those who try, those who are convinced, those who believe, those who make an effort, those who bear patience. So the lessons from Hajj are tremendous. Had there not been lessons from Hajj, the Hajj would never have been compulsory as a pillar of Islam. The greater benefit of Hajj is something that we need to realize and understand. We need to bring it about in our lives and Allah Almighty will grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, Allah Almighty loves the sacrifice. When you sacrifice for anything, you will see the result. The biggest and the best of sacrifices are those sacrifices you make to earn the pleasure of the Almighty or to support those who are earning the pleasure of the Almighty. Look at this wife, Hajar, may peace be upon her. What did she do to her husband? She asked him one simple question. Allahu amaraka bihada. Did Allah instruct you to do this? Ibrahim alayhi salam says, yes. Well, if that's the case, you go, Allah will take care of us. And that's exactly what happened. So my brothers and sisters, we ask Allah to grant us from his provision, from his sustenance, from his virtue, from his mercy. And we ask Allah to make it easy for us to build our conviction, to make it easy for us to achieve what is beneficial for us in this world and the next, to reconnect with this book of Allah in the blessed month of Ramadan and beyond Ramadan. And we ask Allah Almighty to grant us and our offspring the best of this world and the next. We ask Allah as well to take us for Hajj. Those who have not fulfilled the Hajj, 
may Allah Almighty take you for Hajj. And those who have, may Allah Almighty grant us acceptance and the ability to change our lives forever in a way that is pleasing to the Almighty. May Allah Almighty accept from us these few words. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. كتاب أنزلناه إليك مبارك ليدبروا آياته وليتذكر أولو الألباب